Just arrived at the Autosport International Show. Gonna go and have a look to see what we can find. No comment. This is the Aerial EV with four electric motors, one per wheel, mounted inboard producing 1180 brake, 1300 pound foot of torque and 0 to 60 of under two seconds, 100 in four flat. It has carbon wheels wrapped in Michelin stickiest tires, 325 wide, cut two R's, 56 kilowatt hour battery and a range extender jet engine, more efficient than ice or wankel apparently, producing 35 kilowatts. To top that, it's got eight cooling systems to stop it getting hot. Wow. So Nick is going to give us a rundown on the Foundation E race car because he's just arrived, which is good timing. That's a familiar face. Hi, Nick. Hello. Right, we've got the Foundation E car in front of us. So yep. can you tell us a bit more about the inner workings? Because this is the business end, but yeah, t tell us more. Yeah, so single-seater race car. Um, initially designed for petrol, but then there's not a massive market out there for a new petrol race car. So RSR came to us and talked about how can we install a electric powertrain. So taking all the systems and components that we use in all of our conversions. So if you look at um, the main main components here, I think you'll recognize the 120 kilowatt motor. So at the moment it's got 120 kilowatt, we're actually going to put a 150 kilowatt motor in here yeah. um, and run the battery at 450 volt peak. The reduction box you see here is the same one as we developed for the Mini, for the Lotus 7, for the e, uh, 356. So it's part that we know and, and know and love. Limited slip diff in there. Uh, about 1800 newton meters at the wheel. So that'll it's capable of 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and about 130 mile an hour. Yep. So from, from a single seater point of view, that's, that's reasonable performance, right? Battery pack is about 21 kilowatt hour. Yep. Uh, good for like a half an hour session. Familiar charger on the side oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. You know that from our discussion. It's, it's still last in my week. van in the car park. Oh, Hopefully no one nicks it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that's. Onboard charger, seven kilowatt, charge the battery in about three hours. Yeah. A uh, bit of debate about whether we should have fast charge or not. Um, obviously, it's we could then take the onboard charger off, save a bit of weight, but then you need to have a DC fast charge wherever the car is. And if you've got 20 of these, you need 20 chargers. Well, and, and as, it, as you know, I can help with that. Yeah, so. I'm sure you can. The battery is air cooled. Yeah. So, what is the water cooling? Or, so, the water the cooling is, is for the uh, charger, the inverter, and the motor. Right, okay. okay so, not for, so not for the battery. Okay. But I think if we go to fast charge, where you, you, you're able to charge the battery in 20 minutes. So, from a testing point of view, it's great. You can do 20 minute uh, racing, 20 minutes uh, fast charge. But to do that, we'd have to active cool the battery. Certainly for the first season, they will be onboard charger, seven kilowatt or type two charging, right? Uh, test car, yeah, I, I think it's gonna go fast charge. Otherwise you can't sell a test day to a customer if he's gonna have three or four runs in a day yeah. of 20 minutes, it doesn't make no, sense, right? No, that's it. This is the, you've got the fuse. Yeah, this is the fuse box. Inside we've obviously got our own BMS. And, and the control this is the controller, yeah. So the same with you. All, all of our conversions use exactly the same uh, components there. And then on the end there, you've got the inverter, of course. As yeah, well. so th these, these are matched together. Thank you very much, Nick. And, no problem, my uh, pleasure. I look forward to the next project. Yeah, we've got lots on the go. <laughs> lots on the go. Good man, all right. Cheers, buddy. Bye. I've just bumped into Max, who is going to be testing the car. 
So I think this car would actually be very similar to a to a Formula Ford car. Okay. Um, it's, it's the same chassis, basically. It's a space frame chassis that has a halo on top. Uh, and it, you know, as you can see with the suspension, it's very basic. We've done that on purpose to keep the cost down. Yeah. Uh, the wing level, the aero won't do that much. But again, if you look all the way to Formula E, they haven't really gone for. They haven't even got a rear wing anymore. They've gone, you know, it's a complete. Um, they haven't gone for the aero, so for what we're doing, I don't think there's any need to, to do that as well. Uh, have, you, have you driven it already? No, so I'm going to be driving it from February, right. um, late February into March, uh, doing all the, I'm the lead development test driver for it. We're going to start testing it at Blyton. Um, so Blyton Park is, is going to be where we do a lot of the development. Has there been much interest uh, at the NEC so far? Massive, massive amounts. It's it's been really great to see the amount of people that have come round and um, teams that have come round that have been interested in it uh, you know young drivers and their dads which is, is what is really needed yeah. you know again this championship is going to be focused for, for anyone to join in but especially you know we want those coming out of karting they might not want to go into a petrol championship they might want to do something different they might want to go into electric and get into ev racing you know which is it is progressing it is coming so uh, seeing that that level of interest of everyone who walks around get excited by it because it does look cool as well it's a cool looking car yeah, so people see it they think it looks cool they take pictures you know it's spreading the word it's getting it about that this championship is coming no definitely thank you very much max yeah. and yeah steve what, what made you uh, go down this route of electric with the race car okay so we designed and built the car four years ago and with a petrol engine in the back 1.6 ford yeah Great engine, runs really well, super super reliable. Unfortunately, when we started talking to promoters, the need for innovation has crept upon us quickly. The BRSCC have been great, brilliant, require more innovation from a, a car constructor. So the only real way of doing that was with a, uh, an electric assembly, the you know, EV. Yeah. And we approached Nick, as, as you know yeah and he's been great he's helped us with the something we know nothing about at all luckily and here's the luck the chassis accepted the installation quite yeah. well only because the chassis was designed to take a transaxle engine yeah a transverse engine and um so we had a quite a wide chassis bay which lent itself to the electric assembly no so we was lucky yeah. In many ways, yeah. yeah. Trying to put something back into the sport where the youngsters can actually have a go and without having to raise, you know, let's face it, eye-watering budgets yeah. for Formula 4, which is a great formula. We're not knocking it. Uh, we like it. It's a tremendous success, but it's very expensive. It's a big step from car. Mm. And that's that. But that's the world we live in, and we have to... You have to get on with it. I mean, I've been told is the initial outlay of the uh, the single seat car is it eighty thousand? It is expensive. It's a However, lot of money. It's a two year warranty. Yeah, there's a lot of bonuses for no it. Engine, no engine, no engine rebuild. So yes, there no. was an initial quite the, big outlay. The, However, you know the running costs are really low. Yeah. Um, you know, you're really into just sort of tires, pads, and. Mm. You know, you 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 you, you circuit higher, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much for your okay, time, Steve. Okay. And uh, good luck with the uh, project. We keep trying. Thank good you. Man. Thank you. Tesla that has got a Thor electronic tailpipe. Yes, that's right, noise on a Tesla. Because Thor's actually a uh, European company and uh, Top Gear, who you may have heard of, not the TV program, company that owns uh, Powerflow. I'm sure one of one or two of you might have had the Powerflow exhaust back in the day. So uh, yeah, they've taken on Thor and they are the UK distributor and fitter of the Thor electronic tailpipe. And Trevor, next to me here, Hi Trevor. Hi. Is going to tell us a little bit more uh, about the system and how it all works. So yeah, far, far away Trevor, T tell us all. We've got uh, lots of different cars here that we can pick. So we've got a Corvette Stingray picked at the moment. If we go to a Ferrari. 
Yeah. <laughs> or we can go futuristic, UFO. A UFO, that's, that's pretty futuristic, that, yeah. <laughs> or a future car. I'm very interested. What's Transformer? I know there's a lot of people that want to know the Transformer. Yeah, some really interesting sounds. It, it, are those, can you add more sounds to it as well? Uh, yep, if you go to the uh, store, these are uh, free downloads. So I've got Lamborghini, uh, Jaguar, Ace. 80s arcade uh, style, yeah, Ooh, I like a bit of that. Um, wow. Nissan GTR, yep. BMW 5 So yeah, quite, quite a few different yep. options. So um, as I understand it, um, there's an option of a single pipe, or single pipe, single electronic tailpipe, uh, as per you can probably see in the picture over there, and a double. Has this one got a double or a single? It's got a double, but the uh, single isn't a lot um, quieter. It's just like surround sound. Right, I see. Got it. Got it. And um, how difficult are these to install, and where do you install them? Uh, they're dead easy. Uh, it's just four wires, uh, power, ground, and uh, two wires on the CAN bus, yep. and you're good to go. Perfect. And where, where are you guys based? Well, we're, we're based in uh, Bridport in Dorset, but uh, we've got uh, distributors all, all around the country. And uh, are there any other features of the exhaust? Yeah, you can uh, go in and you can adjust the volume of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, dynamic start. Uh, idle speed volume, yeah. uh, idle speed, the working uh, cycle sound, so the relationship between uh, your throttle and uh, what it produces, yeah. and the number of backfires. That's quite a lot of features already, but is there anything else to tell us about uh, the product? Yep, we can turn off the, the car sound, Yep. go to animal noises, brilliant. <laughs> and if we go to the, uh, um, I, I've downloaded these so far, but if we go to the store again, free downloads again. All free, that's yeah, good. Yeah, we can add predators. Um, what the hell is negative? Oh, uh, the, the, the negative comments. <laughs> well, you get enough of those from, uh, you know, ice yeah. owners or about electric cars. Positive comments. Ah, oh, positive, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Or reactions. So, <clears throat> when you take it to Tesla, does it void any warranty at all on the car? Oh, technic technically, yes, it does. Right. Bit of a grey area. Bit of a grey area. Uh, I don't know the fitted price, but to uh, b uh, buy it is six hundred and ninety pounds. And is that for the single or the double? That's the single. And that's included VAT. Plus VAT. Plus VAT. So six ninety plus the VAT. And do you know rough idea of fitting costs? Uh, two to four hours, depending on what car it's going on. Okay, so it's probably, it's going to be the probably early thousands, like yes. 1100, 1200 yeah, quid, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Good stuff. Trevor, thank you so, so much for taking us through this. Um, yeah, I look forward to uh, go and check it out the back end of the car, and uh, if you could play a few of your uh, noises, that would be amazing. <laughs> Good man, thank you. Okay. So they also do...
finished. We're going to make a move back to the Alphard. Um, there's no more electric stuff to look at and it's the end of the day. Just had enough time to look at everything, which was, which was good. Uh, we didn't go in the action area. Thanks guys. We didn't go into the action area and funnily enough, I spoke to someone who went to the action area and they said that they were feeling very ill from the fumes. So it says it all really, doesn't it? Maybe I'll go to the action area when there's uh, electric action going on uh, and then there's uh, less uh, potential cancer, death, uh, etc. Although I remember in my drifting days, it was just tire smoke all the time, just used to get it, give you a headache. Anyway, enough about my uh, environmental ram rambling. Uh, thank you very much for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed the content and I'll see you for the next episode.